Welcome to Weather School for Kids right here on my back porch. I'm meteorologist Lisa Spencer. It is springtime. I can hear the birds chirping in the background and things are blooming everywhere. It's one of my favorite times of the year. But it is also the time that we get the most thunderstorms. So that's gonna be our lesson for today with our Weather School for Kids. Three things that you need to know to help keep you and your family safe when we do have severe thunderstorms. That's what we're gonna learn about today. So number one, can you answer that question? What makes a storm severe? Well, here are some choices for you to help answer that question. Which is not used to define a severe thunderstorm? We've got four choices here. High wind, hail, lightning, or a tornado. What do you think? If you chose lightning, you are right. Most all thunderstorms, by definition, have lightning. Well, let's start with the first one, wind. It's wind that is 58 miles an hour or greater, so about 60 mile per hour winds. One inch in diameter hail. That is about the size of a quarter. That gives you an idea how big that is. And a tornado. But if we have a tornado, it will get a warning all its own. Let's start with wind. Winds that are 58 miles an hour or greater cause damage. So take for example, you're driving down the interstate with your parents and they're going 70 miles an hour. So it's just a little bit slower than that. That kind of wind can cause damage, bring down some trees, also do some roof damage. And then there's hail. Hail that is as large as a quarter or bigger can also do damage to a roof, to a car. But let's learn how it forms. This is our cumulonimbus cloud, our thunderstorm cloud. Inside the cloud, close to the top, it's really cold. I like to think of it as the freezer, like your refrigerator. The freezer, oftentimes on top, you fill up the ice tray with water, you put it in the freezer, and then it freezes, right? And forms some ice. Well, that's what hail is, little chunks of ice. So we get water droplets going up into the freezer. They freeze, making a piece of ice, and then it starts to fall down goes right back up into the thunderstorm, starts to fall down again, and each time it goes up into that thunderstorm, it gets just a little bit bigger until it's so heavy that it falls all the way down to the ground. And that's when we see those little pieces of hail. Of course, they're not all the same size. I showed you the quarter size piece of hail, but there's also pea size hail and dime size hail. We even have baseball size hail and softball size hail. It can get pretty large. Think of some of the sports balls at home that you have. What would you guess is the largest size piece of hail that's ever been found? Think about it. Not a basketball, that's too big. It was a soccer ball. That's a really large piece of hail. Well, let's think about how this hail works again. We'll use a blow dryer. This is gonna be the wind in our thunderstorm. This will be our hail. This is a ping pong ball. So you can see how the ping pong ball keeps going up in the thunderstorm because it's light enough and the wind is strong enough. Each time it goes up there, it gets a little bit bigger. Let's say it grows to be tennis ball size. Then what happens? If the blow dryer weren't there, it would fall out, right? Why is that? because the hail is too heavy, right? And the wind is not strong enough to hold it up anymore, so it's gonna fall out of the thunderstorm. That was a fun experiment you can do at home too. Next on our list, tornadoes. And they are so incredible to watch, but they're so very dangerous. A tornado is a violently rotating wind. So make a human tornado, stand up, and go around really, 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 really fast, and I would do it, except I would get all tangled up in my cord. But try that. Does it make you wanna fall down? See what I mean? Really, really fast. So it's a dangerous, dangerous wind that's rotating around. To be a tornado, it extends from the base of the thunderstorm and makes contact with the ground. It touches the ground. Now, if it doesn't touch the ground, we call that a funnel cloud. What do you think we call it if the funnel cloud is over water? Not a hurricane, 
it's a water spout. And then if it moves on land, it becomes a tornado if it's touching the ground. Tell you what, how would you like to make a tornado in a bottle? Let's give that a try. What you'll need will be two two liter bottles, like I have here. Fill one of them with water about three quarters of the way full. And then for fun, you can add in maybe some glitter, might be fun. I have red glitter today, so put a little bit of that, or as much as you like. You can put food coloring in there too, that's fun. I have some blue stars, so I'll put a few of those in. Now, to put these two bottles together, I have this special little tube, it's called a tornado tube. You can order one of these online, and that way you can screw the two bottles together. But if you don't have that or can't get that, how about some duct tape? If you put enough on there, I think it'll stay together for you. So I'm gonna screw these two together. I have to get them tight or they might leak. Here we go. Gonna make our tornado in a bottle. So let's spin it around. You can see the glitter and the stars. And look at that tornado, that funnel that's forming right in the middle. See it going round and round? Now in the bottle, our tornado is going to stay in the bottle, but if we were making this in real life in the air, it's kind of like creating a vacuum. Because if it were in the air, the water is going to suck things up or the air is going to suck things up inside of it because it's going around really, really fast. But unlike maybe a vacuum cleaner where you're sucking up dirt off the ground, there's no bag and there's no enclosure like you have here with our tornado in a bottle. So all that flying debris is going to go out and around. And that's what we call that flying debris. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. I think my stars are getting clogged in the top of the bottle. All right, let's go back. So we've learned a little bit about tornadoes and high winds. The next thing we need to know, this is number two on our three things you need to know list. How do I know severe storms are near me? We need to know two words, watch and warning. Whenever we hear a watch, that means all the right ingredients are there to make a tornado. So we need to be on the lookout. We need to be aware of what's going on with the storm that day. A watch will be issued for a big area, like for Southern Kentucky and Northern Middle Tennessee. And it'll be in for a long time, from two into maybe eight o'clock in the evening. So several hours. A warning means that it's happening now. So we need to take action. Take action like going to your safe place in your home. So a watch, we're on the lookout. A warning, we take action. How do we know that a warning has been issued? Very important, especially if you're sleeping and sometimes we have tornadoes come at night. On television, our forewarned weather team will be there giving you the latest information, showing you on the radar exactly where the tornado is. Or you can also have a forewarned weather app and that is an app that you put on your telephone or your parents' telephone, and whenever there are warnings, it'll sound a little tone. Also, every home needs a NOAA weather radio, so maybe talk to your parents about getting one for your house if you don't already have one. They will sound a really loud alarm if there's a tornado in your area and a warning has been issued, and that will wake you up if you're asleep. Three, on our three things you need to know to keep your family safe. What do I do if there is a tornado warning? Here's the basics. Think low, think central, think small, and as many walls as you can put between you and the storm. So what do we mean by that? Well, think low. If you've got a basement if you're ha at your house, you want to go to the basement. If you don't have a basement, go to the lowest level of your house and get in the center of the house. So a bathroom or a closet, usually in the center. Think small. You don't want to be in a big room. You want to be in a small room. And by going to the center of the house, you're putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Because what are we doing? We're protecting ourselves from flying debris. And this is all that stuff I was talking about, like our glitter and stars in our bottle. This is the stuff that would be floating around in the air. 
If you're on the top floor of your house, the roof will come off first and some of that flying debris might come into that area. So that's why we want you to be on the lower floor. Don't want you to be in the garage. They're too big, they're too weak, and the air can come in and actually explode the garage. So that's not a good place to be. Bathrooms, excellent place to be. As a matter of fact, you can even get in the bathtub and have your helmet on, maybe put some pillows around you. That's a great place to be as your safe spot during a tornado. The way we know this is because when we see tornado damage, that's what's still standing, the middle of the house. That's the safest place for you to be. Make sense? What about a mobile home? We get that question a lot. Well, mobile homes are not safe during tornadoes because they will flip over and over and over. So if you live in a mobile home, we want you to go to perhaps a neighbor's sturdy house, or you might want to get into a ditch if there's a ditch nearby. And when I say a ditch, just a low-lying area because a lot of times tornadoes will just go right over it. So that would be the best place to be. I'm telling you all these things to keep you safe, right? So we've got them all. Know what a severe storm is. Stay connected by knowing the difference between a watch and a warning and having a way to find out about those and know your safe place. Do you know where the best place is to go during a storm? If you don't, that is your homework on our weather school for today. If you have any questions, you can always send me an email to lspencer at wsmv.com. lspencer at wsmv.com. I hope you've enjoyed our weather school for kids today right here on my back porch.